Mike Krulicki was a teenager when he volunteered for service in the Second World War, a decision that would change his life forever. Well, I was born in Kitchener, a family of nine. At the age of 16, I decided I'm going to join the Army under age. And I joined the Army, 42, 1942, April. That October, we set sail for England, our regiment. That was the Irish regiment on the Queen Elizabeth, by the way, and it was jam-packed. From there, we went to Aldershot, the big base, Army base there. We did basic training there with tanks and so forth, and well, you're firing guns and stuff. So it was a year there almost, and then in that October of 43, we set sail for Italy. Canadian fighting strength in Italy has been increased by the arrival of new infantry and armored formations from Britain. The newcomers lined the rails of their ships as they drew into the busy port of Naples. Representatives of all parts of Canada, keen and fit-looking, eager to take their places alongside the Canadian brothers. Canadian troops played a vital role in the Italian campaign, which led to the liberation of Italy. They faced bitter fighting, mountain warfare, hazardous river crossings, and deadly minefields. When you're a runner, what you do is before the attack, the colonel, he calls all the company commanders in and gives them their orders for the next day. But my job was go there. We listen and they tell us, we had to go back to your company commander and tell them. That's sort of a newsboy, put it that way. But uh, a lot of times you had to go into unfamiliar territory. On the Italian front, preparation is made to crack Hitler's last prepared defense before the Alps, the Gothic Line. Canadian tanks move forward to the attack. Our troops forge their way through the line. My last battle there was at Montecchio, just out of Montecchio, where I stepped on a mine and had my leg blown off. Three nights before I stepped on the mine, I had the same identical dream, a ball of fire and me walking through it. That happened three nights before I stepped there. When I hit the mine, that's all that seems to hit my brain was a ball of fire. As they took, put me on the Jeep to take me to the back for treatment, my colonel drove up. I knew him quite well because I was the runner. Uh, he said, oh, he patted me on the back. You'll be with us soon, son. And I thought to myself, oh, you bugger, <laughs> I got a leg off. So the real battle, I missed, thank God. To me, it was probably a blessing for me. I heard quite a few got killed that time. Oh, here's the telegram they sent to him. Minister of National Defense sincerely regrets to inform you 860142, that was my army number. Mm -hmm. Private Michael Stanley Peter Krulicki has been officially reported seriously wounded in action. Nature of wounds described as mine explosion wound resulting in amputation right foot. When further information becomes available, it will be forwarded as soon as received. Signed, Director of Records. That was something. I just couldn't imagine my dad when he got that. The main hospital, that was in Naples. I was there for about two months. Then they sent me back to the hospital in England. We sent from there back to Canada on a hospital ship. So I arrived back home in January of 45. After that, I don't know, for a couple of years, I think I just more or less loafed around. You couldn't get a job anyway. It was pretty hard with one leg off. But I finally did get in the shirt factory in the stock room. But I had to throw around big boxes of pajamas and boxes, a lot of weight, eh? And, and what happened is that I, well, I had to go to the hospital. The doctor come up and said, oh, you got TB. I did sit in a slit trench in winter time, but the snow there didn't stay, it melted. And uh, I can recall this one night, we had to put our steel helmets on the ground and sit on them. 
all night because of water in the slit trench. You know. Now, I, when I think of it, I know now where my tuberculosis came from. <laughs> so from there, I went in the hospital for a little over a year, 13 months. I mean, my darling wife was in there at the time, too. We, we both ended up in, in the sanatorium in 1949, you went in, didn't you? Yeah, for tuberculosis. And she had seen me there on the stretcher and said, oh, boy, what a handsome guy that is, didn't you? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh. And then we, we did meet secretly with, at nighttime yeah. when the doctors and nurses were not around. He said, uh, I have something to tell you. He told me that he, he had a leg off. That was, I thought it would be something more serious, that he had a leg off. And I said, well, that, that didn't bother me. Now, I don't know if I was young and foolish, but I guess true love, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> As you can call that love on a stretcher, I guess. I came out of the sand a year later in September, and uh, um, I came out at uh, Febu for the following February. February. Yeah. And uh, we were married the next in fifth, July '51. Okay. Well, for all you he men out there, if you want to meet a good-looking woman and end up getting married to her, just go into a sand. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can edit that. <laughs> Mike embraced the war amps philosophy. It's what's left that counts, and adjusted to living life with an amputation. It didn't bother me mentally or, or that way. I, I was quite content with the leg. They made the old type wooden leg with harness and everything. In the morning when you put it on, you're like a horse, buckles here and snaps there. I had a lot of stares at me, I'll tell you that, lots of times, but uh, it didn't fizz on me that much. This picture was taken at a house party. I was a person that loved to dance. We used to go to weddings or dances. And of course, we sat at the table, I didn't dance. So she had to wait till somebody, a relative, would ask her to dance. And finally, the one time she got mad, she said, that's enough of this bull. She said, you're gonna dance. Uh, we had danced in our basement. We did this, the foxtrot, oh, yes. and uh, that way. And then uh, we went to house parties, and he got up to dance. He found it very hard, but we persevered with that. I did finally learn to do several dances, so. It wasn't bad, so the artificial leg actually kept me on the floor better, so <laughs> it was okay. One other thing was we, he wanted to uh, buy a cottage, so I said, if you want to build a cottage, uh, you can, but you're going to have to go in swimming with us too. It was hard on him, but uh, getting in and out of the water. He didn't swim well, but uh, he was able to, and, and he enjoyed many years of, of that. So I think uh, anybody, you just have to persevere with the amputee to do as much as possible. So you can do a lot of things with the limb off. It didn't hold me back. In addition to raising a family with Alice, Mike has devoted his lifetime of experience to the War Amps and its champ and play safe programs, holding many positions over the years, including national director. It's a good thing that one of the best organizations in the world, I think, the War Amps. I think when they first started, uh, it was more the, the war app. Now we have with the kids and that. It's much nicer now what we're doing in the way of the champs and that. The champs are the backbone of us right now. Well, one of the seminars in uh, Waterloo, uh, there was a young boy from up north. I think he was about 16 years old. And uh, his mother was having a very hard time that he had lost a leg. And he was more concerned if he would get his driver's license. I talked to him a bit and said, well, you'll, you'll have no problems with that. Maybe what we say, some things, it could help them too. Uh, I'm sure it does in some cases. But at this rate, it's part of my job. As an old amp, it's part of my job to talk to the new amps, but uh, I think. And I enjoy it, so why not? Champ seminars, I hope they never stop them, because these kids are marvelous, every blessed one of them. There's a lot of nice, good, smart people that we have in our champ program. And uh, I'm sure that they'll carry on our legacy, make me feel proud and great. The war amps are the biggest part of my life. And I, I love the whole darn thing. 
Through the War Amps, Mike and his fellow War Amputees have helped build a lasting legacy for child amputees in Canada. The Association's tradition of amputees helping amputees will continue through the CHAMP program, thanks to the public support of the Key Tag Service.